Hey people, welcome back to my channel. My name is Desmond Z. If this is the first time you've ever seen me. So, when people hear the word three star, when people hear three star, I've noticed that a lot of people get up in arms. A lot of people get, they get angry, they get upset, they feel away, or they feel saddened that they have, a, have to give a book three stars, or they feel disappointed, so they give a book three stars. If I give a book three stars, it was cool to me. It was cool. I enjoyed it. It was fine. Obviously, three star is not the highest rating. It's not the. It's not. It's not what you go for when you open a book. It's not what you go for when you write a book. You want it. You want it to be five star. You wanna knock it straight out the park. So that's why I'm here today before you, just to run through some of my books that I've read in the past and some ones that I maybe haven't talked about. At least I don't think I've talked about to you guys. And that I gave three stars. So let's just talk about them. So starting with number one. Numero uno. And I know I haven't talked about this book because I literally just read it like two or three days ago. Dust Child. With Dust Child, we follow three different st uh, storylines in three different time periods. One is Fong. I think it's Fong. It's P-H-O-N-G. Fong is the child of a Vietnamese woman and a black American soldier that met, you know, back up in the day during the war or whatever. He doesn't know either one of his parents because he was given away um, to an orphanage when he was first born. So he's just been looking for answers his entire life. He wants to know, trying to get to America. He's like, my daddy's from America. I, I should be, you know, I should have citizenship. I want to go there and meet my father, find him, see if he's still alive. Maybe my mother is there with him and they, you know, are carrying on and have built a life there or whatever. There was so much more to be like explored with this character i feel like he was mostly used for a prop and i because there was just there was so much more there to go deeper into and as we were progressing through the book you know we go from storyline to storyline and then we get to a point where we aren't even visiting funk enough but then towards the end of the book you know the author brings him back in we kind of wrap his story up but i feel like there was just so much more there to be used and in the storyline in the the furthest back in time is two sisters who leave their home to go work at two Vietnamese sisters who leave their home to go work at this bar where American soldiers come to like relax or whatever and you know they use what they got to get what they need and you know sometimes that resulted in children another storyline that we have in the present along with Fung uh, because he's being told his story is being told in the past and in the future you'll see if you read it but in the, in the present, we have, what is that man's name? Was it Dan? Yeah, we have Dan, who has come back to Vietnam at the request of his actual wife, Linda, I think was her name. Because she's like, you know what? You have PTSD, you're fighting demons, and you're dealing with all these things that resulted here. Orig I mean, originated here. So maybe we need to go back there and we can figure out the issue. You can solve whatever it is that's unsolved for you. What she don't know is that he had a woman here and a child here. You know, or maybe she do know women's woman's intuition. So he comes back looking for his long lost lover, looking for his child, and they going on this whole journey together. That was just a little bit too much attention being paid to them. What we should have been following was the sisters more and definitely Fong because there was so much more story there to be told. Another book that I gave three stars. Before I let go, I don't believe I ever talked about this. I read this last December, I wanna say, yeah. I read this book last December and this book, like, the girls love this book. They love it. They love it and they love Miss Kennedy Bryan. This is the first book I've actually ever read by her. And most people that I, like, I follow on, like, TikTok and YouTube or whatever gave this book five stars. They said they love it so much. It did not do for me what it did for them, but I definitely can see why they like it so much because this is a good story. I believe I gave this book three or three and a half stars. I'll have to double check. But my main issue with this book, uh, if you don't know what it's about, it's basically about a man and a woman, Yasmin and Josiah, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, yeah, yeah. Yasmin and, and Josiah, they were married, they were like a young couple in love, had two kids, 
we're you know supposed to run running a success, successful business then they get something tragic happens and they get divorced but both of them still have feelings for each other even though they're both trying to move on with their lives and co-parents or whatever it's clear to see that they're still hung up on one another my main issue with this book was every time the male main character came onto the page all he talked about was how much he wanted to f Yasmin. How much he miss, he wanna grub on her titties and he wanna kiss and lick all up on her and he wanna do all of that. And then you get to Yasmin and she talking about the love and the breakup and the tragedy and the and the heartbreak and the, and the, the, the gut rich and pain. But he's supposed to have been all in love, but all he can talk about is the, the sex and all, like, I, I just, I didn't understand. I didn't understand, I didn't understand, I didn't understand, I didn't understand. Like, yes, we know that's a vital part of a relationship for most people. But, what else, what else do you miss about your ex-wife? What else did you enjoy about the relationship with her? Because at this point, you're getting on my nerves. You didn't, you never loved this woman. You didn't love her. You didn't love her. If that's all you, if that's all you can reminisce about. And it was just like, it kept going on and on. And I'm like, that's all he got to say? That's all he got to say? Because I'm from her, I'm getting pain. But then him, all I'm getting is him, him thinking what is, he just want to, what is that? But what I recommend this book to you, if you, if you saw this on my shelf, or if you was out in the store and you said, hey, is this a good book? I would say, that's a, that's a good book. Yes, I would advise you read it. Come a but. Beware. That's what a three star, that's what a three star is for me. For me in words. That's a good book, but. If I give a book three stars, it's always going to have a comma but. However, comma, with it, with it. And what I think most people's biggest hang up about three stars is because we all know three comes after two. If you can count, three comes after two. And if anybody gives a book two star, then that's just it. That's a wrap for the book. That's a wrap for the book. Don't even pick the thing up. And because three is so close to two, then I guess people feel like, well, they're just lumping in with twos. But for me, there is a big gap. Even though three comes directly after two, between the two and the three, there's a big gap. There's a big gap. Because there have been books that I have not really enjoyed, just like this next one. We talk about a segue. And I, Boys Come First. Boys Come First is about three young black gay friends just trying to figure out life right up my alley right up my alley talk about the representation representation it matters i wanted to eat this up i i wanted this to be a five star read for me but it was not however come up I don't think this was a bad book my biggest gripe for this book was when i i remember saying that the whole gentrification thing, which I am not above talking about, it is something that needs to be talked about, and I said it back then, is that somehow that overshadowed their story. And then I also thought that they were gonna be childhood friends, but they weren't. I thought all three of them were gonna like have been friends that grew up from childhood to adulthood, but only two of them knew each other when they were younger, and then they didn't actually physically know each other. They were online friends who met later um in a in a uh, into their adulthood but anyways those were some of my biggest hang-ups and it kind of like tainted the book for me a bit and in my reading experience but this was still a much needed book and it was not a bad book by by any means and also it's getting adapted into a tv series which i will be watching i will be watching even though i didn't fully enjoy my reading experience i did enjoy it enough to watch the tv show so I'm excited about that. The Rewind and This Time Tomorrow. Both of these, see, this book had what I thought this one was going to have. The Rewind is about a couple who dated when they were in college, broke up like their senior year, and now it's 10 years later. Two of their friends from college are getting married at the on the college campus in some banquet hall. I don't know who gets married on a college campus, but hey. So they're back here. And then they wake up one morning in their old, in the boy man's old dorm room. And they have to replay the, the last 24 hours 
to figure out what exactly led them to that situation. I thought that was going to have like a like time travel, like a little fantasy aspect to it, a little magical realism where they it's kind of like the ghosts of Christmas past or you go back in time and you standing on the sidelines looking at your past life, giving commentary on your outfits and the things that you said and did. That's what I thought, but that's what this book had. This was basically just a really, really long episode of Friends. And I remember I said that in the, in my video because like it stuck with me. The Rewind. The Rewind was a cool book. Just know, going into The Rewind, that is just a very, 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 very long episode of Friends. It got to a point where it felt like we were going in circles. We were going in circles and it started to lack something. But, I still enjoyed this. I laughed a few times, good humor, good romance, predictable ending, but I don't mind some endings being predictable. This time tomorrow, she goes back in time and is reliving her 16th year, because she just turned 40, I believe, the main character, and she's reliving her 16th year and, you know, getting to live her past and spend time with her dad, who in the present is sick and dying, or he's already dead, but I think he's sick and dying. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is one of those ones where it's like, did I fully enjoy that? Was it everything that I expected? No. Would I reread that if I reread books? I really don't. No, but I, I feel like it's not a bad of a, not as bad as of a, not as bad of a book. <laughs> to give like two stars. This time tomorrow, I was excited about that as well. I gave that three stars. It was very middle of the road for me. The story was cute. It was it was nice, heartwarming. Um, it just didn't move me in a huge way. I also have those books where it's like, yeah, that wasn't what I expected, but it wasn't bad enough to give it two stars. Like somewhere out there, I feel like this deserves to be read. That's another one of my reasons to give a book three stars. If I feel like on some level, somewhere over the rainbow, this deserves to be read by some people, I'd give it three stars. The way my brain works, I don't know, don't ask me. Okay, that's just how it goes. If you have a different system, hooray for you. People person. I read People Person. Did I read this last year? Or was it this year? That was last year. Yeah, it was last year. First of all, I, I still am so mad. I still, I, I hate this cover. I hate this, I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. And when I first got this and then I saw the UK edition, I was like, I can just return this. I enjoyed this book. All of the supporting, supporting characters, because this is more of an ensemble cast, an ensemble, if you will, ensemble cast about a group of siblings who didn't grow up together except for two of them. There's five in total. They all have the same father, but two of them have the same father and mother. So they've only met once in their life as a group collectively. And then when they were like, from the ages of, I want to say like nine to maybe like 19. So 10 years later, something happens to one of the siblings and she calls the oldest one. It's like, I need you. I know we haven't spoken in years, girl. You ain't, you, you, I know we ain't talked. I know we ain't talked, but I need your help. So she calls her sister, which brings them all back together. And then they deal with, you know, past issues, family and all that, da, 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 things you can expect. All of the other siblings were hilarious, but the one that called and initially got them all back together was our central character. She's the one that whenever we dealt with somebody else's story, we kind of always came back to her. She's the one that brought all this together. She just wasn't that interesting. The heart of this story is when they are together, when, they, when they're when they separate and we are just dealing with dimples by herself. The story does kind of lag, but the dynamic between all the siblings is what makes this book. I gave it three and a half stars, and now it is not like a four or five read for me. And I think that was maybe the point of her character. She didn't fully believe in herself and didn't see how brightly she shined. But I mean, I feel like if that's who she is as a character, we need to be able to see the good in her and how much she shines and want more for her. But I was just like, girl, if you, you believe you're boring, I kind of believe you're boring too, girl. Like, 
I ain't gonna lie, you you think you dry, you some people are dry, and you might be a little dry girl. So let's let's give the spotlight to somebody else. And you know, Ramadan Ramsey, I do not remember what I gave this book. I feel like I gave this book three, three and a half stars. I feel like in my brain, that's what it was. I have to go back and find the clip when I read this. I read this early last year. The book was good overall. I would give it like a solid three. There were times where I would just kind of like, I really, really had to be like, okay, this isn't real, this isn't real. And there were parts of it where I feel like it kind of dragged on a little bit, but overall, like I did enjoy the book. I would highly, I am not say highly recommend it, but yes, I would recommend you read this book. But whenever I look at this book or whenever I think about it, I think about it fondly, like I don't think about it in a negative way. This is a book that I really enjoyed and I don't hear a lot of people talking about. I don't think I've ever seen anybody else talk about this book, like at all. I saw this book in a bookstore and I was like, oh, I need to read that. So, and I enjoyed it, but I don't think I've ever seen anybody else talk about this book, like at all, post about it. I'm not saying they haven't. I'm not saying they haven't. I'm not saying I'm the only person in the world that's read this book because I know for sure I'm not. But what I'm saying, is nobody ever came across any of my timelines, any across of my feeds on the socials, on the internet, talking about this book. But it's about a boy named Ramadan Ramsey, who his mom was a black American, his father was from the Middle East. I don't remember where it's specifically. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, his dad was, I can literally just look at the book. His dad was, uh, was, was a Syrian immigrant who came to New Orleans around the time of uh, Hurricane Katrina and years later once something happened something tragic happens in Ramadan's life and he's like where my daddy I need to find my daddy so he goes on this whole big adventure traveling across the world by himself flying here and flying there how who knows but it's 2005 maybe anything can happen the reading list this is gonna be my last book and I think that I read this book when I did the whole book set in the bookish world thing and it's a really sweet story it's a nice story i will definitely say that it kind of muddled along for the most part but then the last i'll say the last 30 to 40 percent of the book is what really got me it's where it really started to get emotional and tugging at the heartstrings and that's what i loved the most so i gave it like three three and a half but mostly for the end because the first half of it, it would just and this book to me the overall theme the overall message and feeling and the emotion that was emoting while i was reading is what earned this a three-star rating and not anything lower because i wasn't just like on the edge of my seat jumping for joy when I read this. There were times where I was bored. There were times where I was just like, okay, can we can we pick it up? Can we get something interesting going on? But once I finished the book, I was like, hmm. Like it, just, it just, I felt not completely dissatisfied. And that is another reason why I will give a book three stars. Just like maybe it wasn't like the best, most exciting thing, most gut-wrenching read held my attention but once I finished it I was like the overall theme of it and, like there's a little there's a little t little t t little little something that like tugs at you why am I doing that if I'm talking about tugging like it just pulls that's how you pull not that it just pulls at your heartstrings a little bit and you're kind of like I can appreciate that I can appreciate what you were trying to tell me what you were what you were doing there that's what the reading list was. This is about a man, a man, 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 man. He's a widower. His name is Mukesh. He lives a quiet life in West London where he shops every Wednesday, goes to Temple, and worries about his granddaughter Priya. And he's he has daughters, and he's not really close to them, and his granddaughter he, he sees and uh, here and there. And then there's this girl. Her name is Alicia, and they develop this friendship. He's like a pseudo-grandfather for her. It's, it's a whole little cute little thing or whatever. And so at the end of it, overall, I was like, okay, you know what? The message there, the theme, the, there's a little feeling there that's that, that's tugging at the old, old beater there. You know? 
So that's why I gave this three stars. So yeah, that's it. That's 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 this video. That is this video because I see a lot of people talk about three stars, and like it's always like a certain negative thing for it. Like, every book ain't gonna be five stars. Every book ain't gonna be four stars. So if I give a book three, three and a half stars, please know I enjoyed the book on some level. It was good. It was not a waste of my time. So yeah, those are my thoughts on three star reading ratings. I don't know how y'all do y'all's rating system. Is anything below a four star bad for you? Is that how you feel? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, yeah, and that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for watching. Give the video a like. Subscribe if you are not subscribed. And I'll see you in my next one. Thank you for watching.